Hi, this is the continuation of our mini-series regarding infrared spectroscopy. We're in the third installment of our mini-series. I will try to indicate that on the YouTube, you know, the order of these. Um, the other thing you need to learn this week, and again, just because I'm doing this does not mean you're not going to get support in the lab. We just find the familiarity kind of helps people uh, get started. I apologize for my voice. I have been sick all week. I think people know that. And I've been really kind of under the weather, so my voice is still not back to normal. I have laryngitis. So if you can't understand me, I apologize. Um, <clears throat> the, what I'm going to show you now is how to make a solid pellet, which is a more sophisticated way to make a solid sample. And I would like every group this week to do one film, like I showed in the last film video, and one um, pellet. Okay? The pellets are tough. They take a little little skill. Okay, so we're going to work on that right now. I'm nervous because, you know, every once in a while my, my pellets don't come out right. So I could have a complete bust here and my pellet might not work. Um, so how do, how do you do this? Well, for this you really do need the agate mortar and pestle. You have to have it. We have three or four of these. Unfortunately, they really take a beating. People are kind of rough on them. They're very expensive. Um, now, I'm just using a solid from a bottle, but you folks are going to have a solid that you isolated. You're going to have two or three solids that you isolated. And one of them, I suggest you study this way. Now, the way you make a pellet is you need two milligrams of your sample. I'm estimating, I'm really guesstimating, okay, guesstimating. I'm trying to put about two milligrams in my, my pestle, you know. But the truth is, beginners frequently have no idea how much compound they're putting in. None. All right? I recommend the first pellet that you make go down to general chemistry, measure it out on the analytical balance. How much is two milligrams? How many grams is that? Think about that. It's very low. We can't measure it on our balances. Our balances only go out to hundredths, okay? So, what do you do first? When you get your approximately two milligrams in, you take the mortar and you really grind it up into a fine powder. And the reason we have these special mortar and pestles is because of their size, but it's also because they are very smooth and they make very fine particles. Okay, next, also I guess you won't detonate anything if you have something that's potentially explosive. Maybe you would, I don't know, but they're very smooth. Um, the next thing you do is add some potassium bromide. Now you will find in these desiccators very dry potassium bromide. It's IR grade. It's very high grade. I, like, you know, in a cooking show almost, have pre-measured my KBR, my potassium bromide. You need 100 milligrams, okay? 100 milligrams is how much on our balances. Think about it, 100 milligrams. We can do it on our balances. So I measured this, and I'm going to pour it in. It's considerably more than the amount of solid you've put in. I'm going to clean off my mortar, okay, and I'm actually going to use the other end. I like the other end better. I'm going to very lightly stir it. It's like I'm tossing a salad. I am not grinding the KBR. The reason I don't want to grind the KBR is because grinding the KBR will result in The KBR surface, more surface area being exposed, and KBR is extremely hygroscopic. It'll pick up all kinds of water. So, so you grind your compound, that little tiny bit, you make it into this very fine powder, then you toss it into the KBR, okay? Once I get it tossed, I put it in this, I'm putting it back in the weighing boat. This is how I prefer to do it. Not everyone does it this way, okay? I put it back in can't see it. It's white. It's all white. Now, what you need to make a pellet 
is you need a pellet maker. A pellet maker consists of two bolts and a nut, a double-headed nut, I guess you'd call it that. What you do is take one of your bolts and bring it in halfway, okay, halfway in. Then set it down. Take your, your, mixed, your nicely mixed sample. I like weighing boats because I can squeeze them and just shove the sample in. So I'm going to take this and just shoot it right in there. You can do lots of good stuff with weighing boats. I'm hoping it's coming out. I think it all came out. Compound transfers beautifully from weighing boats. Then I'm taking the other bolt and I'm screwing it in. You want to screw it in until it's finger tight. Don't go crazy. Now, if you go across the room, this is what I've got right now. We have a, and I can't think of what this is called, Mark. What's this called? That. I don't know. A mount. I'm going to call it a mount. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's almost like a vice, you know, that a construction worker, uh, that a, a, um, carpenter would use, but I, I would call it a mount for this cell, okay? You set the sample into the mount, okay? Now today, for just for dramatic purposes, I have these giant wrenches, but truthfully, you're going to use smaller wrenches. And what you do, it's like when you change a tire. Now honestly, I've never changed a tire in my life, but I've seen people do it. When you change a tire, right, you have to put the nuts in very gradually. You don't tighten one all the way. So what you do here is you turn this a little bit, all right? Then flip it over, turn this a little bit, flip it over, turn this a little bit, flip it over. Guess what I'm doing now? I'm turning it again. This gives you a lot of torque, so you can really turn it. Even if you don't have a lot of body strength, you'll be able to do this. Turn it over. And I always tell students, this is where if you have, you have psychiatric, no, joking. If you have psychological problems, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. If you have, like, I shouldn't have said that. If you're having, like, a lot of stress, okay, that's what I meant to say. You let out your, this is where you let out your angst because you can really pull this. Let out all your distress on this thing. Because you really want it to be nice and tight, okay? Nice and tight. Okay, so let out that, all that stress from the wheat on that. Really tight, tight. Okay, now, I'm a big believer that this thing should sit for a minute. What's going on here? What's going on is the KBR has your sample dispersed in it. You're putting the KBR at very high pressure, okay? When it's at very high pressure, the KBR is going to fuse together and make a window, okay? The window will have your compound dispersed in it. So it's almost like those sodium chloride plates, but with compound dispersed in it. And we're actually going to run, run the beam of IR right through the middle of this thing, okay? I have come to believe from making many pellets over the years that it takes time. There's kinetics for fusion, just like there's kinetics for melting. This takes a couple minutes, so don't be in a rush. Let it sit for a minute. How are we for time? All right, so we're going to let this sit. And when we come back, we're going to run it. So come, come back for the next installment. Thanks. Bye.